Hello, my name is Vidal Ekachuku, and in this episode of PG Cast, we'll be using lateral joints to more efficiently aggregate columns. You ready? Let's go. Let's say we have a table of developers. Each developer has an ID as its primary key and a username. We also have a table of developer activities. Looking at its structure here and at some dummy data, we'll see that each activity references both a developer and an event type. All you devs out there will quickly recognize that this is a short list of the actions you can perform on GitHub. You can find details about how I set up the data in the show notes below, but for now we're going to dive right into dissecting them. Let's say for each developer, you want an array of his activities event types with a size no greater than five. As you might expect, a simple join coupled with a group by and an array ag will get us mostly there. Let's have a look. This is a good start, but as we said, we want at most five of each developer's activities in the array. So how do we do that? Now, you might think that you could just throw a limit 5 clause in the join subquery, call it a day, and go pour yourself a glass of lemonade. Oh, but you'd be so wrong. Let's see what happens if you try that. Notice something fishy? Are your Postgres senses tingling? Well, they should be. If you look closely, you'll notice a couple of things. First, we're not getting back all the developers who returned an activities array in our first query. Secondly, of the developers that are coming back, we're not getting anywhere near the desired activities count. The reason this happens is because of the limit clause. As Postgres iterates over each developer, it only looks at the first five of all activities and returns a row only if the developer's ID happens to match one of those five activities developer ID. What we really want Postgres to do is to apply the limit not to all activities, but only activities whose developer ID matches the current developer's ID. For instance, if we only cared about one developer, we could do something as simple as adding a WHERE clause to the join subquery like this. This is great, but now we only get one row for one developer. How do we do this for every developer? Maybe we can change the where equivalent statement from developer ID equals one to developer ID equals D dot ID. Let's see what happens. Eh, that didn't work. Postgres yells at us for not having access to the D alias inside the join subquery. This is where the lateral keyword comes into play. Watch what happens when we put it right before the join subquery. Ta-da! We get what we want. We see a list of all the developers who have activities, and we see the ones that have up to five. But wait, what happened? As it turns out, the lateral keyword gives us access to the columns provided by the preceding from item, which in this case is the current developer. We take that developer's ID and use it to limit the activities before trying to join the two tables. There are some other clever ways to achieve this without using the lateral keyword. They may employ common table expressions or window functions, but we won't cover those in this episode. If you're able to use these tools to achieve the same result, hit us up and we may include it in a future episode. Until then, thanks for watching and please leave feedback in the comments below.